In an effort to modernize its fleet, the Illinois Central built over 200 brand new cabooses from 1970 to 1972, being delivered in two different waves with minoring detail differences between each wave. The cabooses would serve the IC, live through the ICG era, and continue on through the current CN reign. Several examples also found life outside the IC being sold to various short lines over their lifetimes. Tangent announced the release of the caboose at TrainFest 2022, with examples being available for purchase that weekend. Normal dealers would take delivery the following week. The release would include road names for the IC, ICG, CN, CMW, and Mid-South for a total of nine paint schemes. The different paint schemes have varying numbers of road numbers, and the total run features 25 available numbers, as well as unnumbered and unpainted kits. The MSRP on the models is $119.95, and dealer discounts can be found closer to $100. The model we'll be taking a look at today is IC9464, one of the original 1970 variants. I also picked up the CN2005 modern repaint version, and we'll compare the features between these two examples. Starting off the detail analysis with the A end of the caboose, you'll notice the brake wheel on this end, and this caboose does feature two brake wheel assemblies on either end. You can identify the A end of the car by the smokestack orientation on the top. The main spotting difference is the addition of the fuel oil filler port located on the car body side. Just below the fill port is the etched metal screen in the floor used for draining spilt fuel oil from the caboose platform. The etched metal allows modelers to see through the roof down to the rails from the platform. The coolest feature on these cars is the addition of the operational class lights on select cars. The original 1970 IC caboose, as seen here, features red and green class lights using colored plastic lenses and SMD LEDs underneath. The caboose car body end features some great rivet details and molded on details as well. The cabin door is nicely done with molded details like the door handle. The cabin door window insert is finished off with some fine metal detailing to represent the window screens fitted in the window. The frames are painted with a silver metallic finish over the rivet details. Some of the smaller details found on the sides of the car are the high quality printing like seen on the side steps. The overall printing on the model is very sharp with lettering legible under magnification without any blurriness. The side steps have the separately applied metal grab irons sweeping down the car body and have molded on rivet details where the grabs meet the car body. One of the model specific details of the original 1970 caboose is the silver window framing on some of the side windows. Later versions would either have this window plated over or the IC orange would be finished on the framing. Since the original version was introduced in the 1970s, these cars would sport the ill-fated car track ACI placards with great printing and paint line separation. Similar to the cabin exterior doors, the interior bathroom features windows with the metal details to simulate privacy screens. The car body rides on the Barber 70-ton caboose-style trucks. These trucks feature the CNC machined 33-inch metal wheels with the standard RP25 110,000 treading. The last feature to check out is the reporting marks printed on the car body frame center sill, only viewable by flipping the car over onto one side. The other end of the car is largely the same but does feature some smaller differences. The Centralia IC cabooses feature this slanted ladder and Tangent has replicated this well with the ladder slanting out towards the end of the car and about halfway up slanting in towards the car body. The rest of the end cage details are well done as well, painted in the IC orange and molded in a one piece plastic detail. Both the end cages sport brake wheel assemblies molded onto the end cage details and separately applied brake wheels. The brake chain is nicely done, wrapping under the car body to the brake lever linkage. The car body sill features some separately applied metal grab ions on either side of the coupler box. The semi-scale draft gear box is very nicely done, extending out several scale feet to the coupler. The original painted version had these painted black to match the underbody paint scheme, with later schemes opting to color match the draft gear box to the IC orange. Another spotting feature of the 1970 version is the coupler cut bar. The original piece is a clunky, heavy-duty variant. These would be upgraded to a simplified version for the 1987 and later versions. The models all feature genuine KD scale metal couplers, and the models all sport flexible rubber airline hoses. 
Similar to all tangent models, the tops of the models are very well detailed. The most notable feature of the roof is the etched metal walkway that runs down the entire length of the roof. This separately applied component is styled in the Apex version slotting, and depending on which version you buy, the rooftop walkway will be slightly different to fit the specific roof panel styling. At either end of the walkway are these separately applied plastic grab irons that allow access from the end cage and ladders up onto the roof walk. On this 1970 version, this does include the original Stanray diagonal roof panels, the main spotting feature for this run. And the other style of the roof is the Pullman standard version, which can be seen on later versions, as well as other short line railroads based off which car was sold to the short line. The smokestack is located near the cupola on the roof and does feature a smoke deflector. The smokestack is also a road specific detail with minor differences between the releases. The top of the cupola is also fitted with details. All four corners do feature these separately applied metal grab irons as well as the 1970 version does feature the can style radio antenna. Flipping the car over, the underside is littered with a great amount of detail. Some previously mentioned details like the etched metal side steps and floor drains are also seen a little bit better from underneath. The various air plumbing details are all very nicely done. Some of the major components include the triple valve, retainer valve handle, and air reservoir tank are easily recognizable in separately applied details. The plumbing between all the major components include fine wire application and the brake lever assemblies are all done in plastic. The center sill also features good molded on details that highlight the keystone cushion under frame. Each of the major versions has its own specific details and minor changes compared to each other. We'll bring in the 2005 CN version to check out some of the differences between that and the original 1970. The ends of the car are pretty similar with only two minor differences. The first of these is the difference in lighting features. The modern CN version uses the single red marker light in the center of the car body with the green and red class lights plated over. The other difference is the coupler cut bar. Instead of the larger heavy duty version shown earlier, the modern version is a more simplified single bar connecting the handle to the pin. The roofs of each type is also where the major differences are. The first of these is the roof walk styles. While the gratings are the same apex style, there are some changes to where the grating is secured to the roof. Notably, the roof ladder platform size is a little bit different with the smaller one on the 1970 version. On top of the cupola is the additional smaller vent stack. This was added when the cabooses were swapped over to chemical toilets and is the breather pipe for the toilet tank. The main smokestack was also modified with shops opting for a shorter version and chopping off the top. There are minor changes on the underside as well. These are a little bit harder to notice with all the extra details across the underside. The biggest of these is the addition of the IC battery box. The original 1970 version did not include this battery box and versions after the 1970 opted for this installation. Every caboose is equipped with interior lighting as well as marker or class lights. These lights are fitted with LEDs and are independently controlled using the provided magnetic wand. The light switches are under the roof with the exterior class and marker lights being controlled near the ends of the car for each light and the interior light switch is near the cupola towards the smokestack. The exterior class lights toggle through the red, green, and off position while the marker lights are an oscillating lighting feature that toggle on or off. The cars are fitted with KD scale metal couplers and the coupler heights were compared to the KD height gauge. On the review models, it was found that the A end on both models were at the correct height while the B end of the cars were both slightly low. The weight of the cars were also examined. The car bodies measure in at 5 and 7 eighths inches long, so the NRA recommended weight is 3.93 ounces or 111 grams. The actual car weighs in at 5.32 ounces or 151 grams, so the cars are slightly overweight by 1.39 ounces or about 40 grams. Each wheel was measured for the correct gauge and was found to be in tolerance. The cars were also knocked over slightly to check for body wobble and found that the cars have good three-point suspension. For the scoring section of the review, the score will be broken down into several categories, each with their own point totals tallying up to 100 possible points. The model comes in packaging similar to a locomotive with a combination of hard plastic and soft plastic foam for good protection. One issue I did have was the lack of instructions or exploded parts diagram for the extra details and instructions for installing these said extra components. The paint on the model is second to none with razor sharp printing and good paint coverage across the model. 
Paint lines were sharp without any fuzziness, and lighter paint over the darker base colors looked good as well. The accuracy is perfect with road and model-specific details across each of the offerings. Tangent went above and beyond making sure every example is a perfect representation of its real-life counterpart. The details on the model are extremely well done, with a great mixture of separately applied details and a small amount of molded-on details to boot. This isn't a great example of where I couldn't find any aspects of this model where someone could improve with third-party details. The couplers, trucks, and wheels are all pretty standard for a tangent offering. The model offered KD number 158, a scale metal coupler with one side being low. The CNC metal wheels were a tangent product, and this caboot calls for the 33-inch variant. The chassis rides on the Tangent Barber Caboose trucks. Unlike recent Tangent products, the trucks do not offer the animated roller bearing caps, a missed opportunity for Tangent in my opinion. The Caboose operates really well. The shorter wheelbase and good heft provides a smooth and prototypical ride. The couplers and wheels are both premium industry standard, so no issues with either of those. The Caboose is very expensive and such will price out many modelers. That being said, the detail level and various features are second to none. I thought the value was overall pretty good for this amount of detail on a relatively unique model. The only other aspect to mention was the CN model that came with the marker lights. On one end, the marker light was notably dimmer and compared to the other side, so I did take away one point for that. By the end of the review, that did end up failing, and so this model will be returned for repairs back to Tangent. Adding up all the points gives a 95 out of 100 or a solid A rating. And when comparing the Tangent IC Caboose to previously reviewed models, the IC Caboose winds up towards the top, landing at the number 9 spot on the list. Overall, the Caboose is a very nice model of a relatively unique piece of equipment that only really fits a niche group of people, and otherwise is a great release from Tangent that really shows their strength and devotion to the hobby. While my examples did have a few issues, these are relatively minor, and the Caboose is still a superb model, and I would definitely recommend this to any Midwest modelers. Let me know what you guys think about these cars, and if you think they're worth the hefty price. Tangent has released several extremely well Cabooses over the last few years, and this IC product runs right along with those. But that's all I got for you guys this time. I will go ahead and leave you with one final run-by shot of the Tangent IC Wide Vision Caboose. But comment, rate, subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.